right, we here. I go by the name of DJ Bless, a.k.a. Sutter Kane. I'm here with Ruben of Alicia Audio, one of my favorite audio brands, hands down, that I have used in the past, like, year or two and stuff. Like, it's definitely been a game changer in my setup. It's nice to meet you, and I'm uh, glad to be here talking to you. Yeah, thanks very much, DJ Blast. <laughs> <laughs> we had to get we had to get the uh the you know the cinematic intro going. This, yeah. this is the part where the, where the titles come across the screen <laughs> and stuff. We're making it happen, so we do the little jiggle dance. But dude, <laughs> what I wanted to talk to you about today with your gear, man, is like I said, is uh it's been a game changer in my setup as far as production goes and as far as mixing goes. Your gear has definitely been one of the few pieces that I've seen that is very transient based. And what I mean by that is that it's not trying to slow the transients down. It's trying to enhance the transients that you have. An example of that type of music is uh, hip-hop and EDM, which is a very transient-based genre where it's very highly um, on kicks, snares, uh, 808s, and stuff. And I noticed that yours, your gear lets you manipulate those type of transients and those type of sounds and stuff. Now, when you started making this gear, did you have that in mind? Were you a producer first, or did you say, okay, you know, we're going to make something totally different compared to before? Uh, that's a good question because exactly when you design gear, you have to have an uh, idea in your mind what it should sound like. Like when you're producing and mixing a track, they have, have an idea what kind of direction you want to go. Um, and therefore, my reference is more based in the beginning of the 90s, but more uh, rock bands like uh, Pink Floyd, really? like Dire, Dire Straits, and uh, also some Genesis, Genesis. So these were all my, my artists. But the recording in that days were really made with great transients in the drum with a lot of dynamic and this mm -hmm. was my reference and, and with Pink Floyd this huge soundscapes they creating with their tracks and uh, I think this is what it was my mind but and uh, and and other and also was in electronic music and I know that this is very important that all the kicks and drums are very important to bring the people to dance on the dance floor and therefore it's for me the transience and then the clearness and the power in the music is very important to me yeah, I've noticed that. Like I said, your stuff is definitely not a slowed down um, transient based gear. All the way from the music EQ, the impressor, um, the envelope, like everything is straight up like, yo, we want the drums, we want your transients to kick through. So if you're at a stadium or a club or any place, when they hear that mix or hear your production, it translates very well through the speakers. Like, you feel what I'm saying? And everything like that. So that's what I definitely got from the gear, unlike other gear, which, like I said, wants to slow the transients down. And that's shocking that you would be more into, like, the Genesis and Pink Floyd, because I was thinking more like, okay, he might be into Depeche Mode or some of that nature because it was very transient-based bands back then, or NXS or stuff of that nature. I just was more the, the um, recording itself. So, um, mm -hmm. because especially... Uh, the Dire Straits, the last album, I think was was ninety one. Uh, the drums was a lot of transient in there, so there wasn't a lot of dynamic in there. And my, if you have a snare drum in a rock band or maybe a tronic track, it's have the same uh, thing what, what the snare should do. Uh, but this is what drives me more because in the eighties there was not that much electronic music. What mm -hmm. could be my reference? So therefore, from the sound vision, it's more rock. But um, actually, there's so much great also electronic music out there, which is similar with a huge soundscape effects and depth and reverbs and delays and kicks that are really up front and, and when I listen to this kind of music on, on, on a big sound stage it's yeah wow this is like cinema and, and therefore yeah. this drives me uh, and, and that was my vision in, in terms of, of music and how when you process something that you, that you keep closer to the music yeah I can see that that's what I'm saying you can get, it's more of a 3D sound and stuff as far as the closeness to the music, like I said, because of the transients and stuff. Unlike other stuff where it'll, it'll smooth it out, but it won't be as high transient. It's more of just a feel than anything. Where this one's a feel and it's a punch, so you feel it. Like, you feel what I'm saying? So, yeah, no, that's what I love about it. I personally tell all my friends this, man. I really believe your gear is made for hip-hop producers and stuff, yo, like 100%, man, because us, we love drums. Like, we love drums. Drums have to knock. The drums don't knock, your production's trash. Like, you feel what I'm saying? So your impressor stays on my drum bus. Yeah, I mean, the, the drums is also important at, let's say, rock music. And if you're standing next to a drum kit and hear a drummer hitting the snare, it's really bam in your face. Yeah, it's in your and, face, yeah. Uh, yeah, and then on the other hand, if you have a not so good recording, you're in the studio, oh, hey, where's all the smashing? Where are the transients? And then you're using, in the, in the back in the days, compressors to cr recreate the transients because they were lost in, let's say, the microphone or the preamp or whatever, mixing desk 
because the transients are lost and therefore you need tools to to bring up the transients again and therefore uh, it's so important to to build the equipment that um, that has a transit itself or don't lose this. For, for example, mm-hmm. um, analog equalizers, uh, there are a lot of stages in there and um, w- when you don't, when it's not well designed, you lose the transients. Even if all's in zero position, switch it in, oh, you lose something. Or maybe it's a transient, the clearness, the depth, and therefore, uh, then it comes to circuit design to, to prevent this or to, to hold all this energy what's also in the music itself. Yes, no, I totally agree. Like I said, yeah, when you put it through certain EQs, if you put a drum, let's just get, let's say you put a drum through something that's very uh, transformer based, automatically the drum is going to slow down, whether it's the EQ, even when you just put it in there. Unlike the impressor, when I put my drums through the impressor, I have my impressor set to uh, set and forget it. So when I put it on the drum bus, man, my drums just like blow up automatically. Like, I mean, automatically my drums just blow up. And I've done an A, B before and after uh, without the impressor and with the impressor. It's like night and day. Like, me personally, I can't see me doing my production or mixing without the impressor on the drum bus. You get what I'm saying? So yeah. with the whole impressor, what was your mind state with that? Like to create something like, a, a, like what made you say, you know, I'm going to create this this compressor that's like no, because I've never seen a compressor like that. That has like the negative ratios, the tilt EQ on it. I mean, it's like really a, a well thought out compressor. Was that one of the first pieces that you thought of design or did you have something else and then you built off of that? Yeah, this story about the Empress is also funny because uh, in 2006, when, when when the Alpha came out, we went to studios in in uh, Los Angeles and New York and uh, some studios, and some engineers uh, tried to force the Alpha to, to extreme settings. But the, hey, it's not mm. made for extreme settings. I mean, with the Alpha, we can also do negative ratios, but always you don't feel that there's any problem with that. And so I decided, okay, let's create a specific device for. For creative purpose, and I know, and even in it was in, in that tour, I was in a hotel room starting my first schematics for the Empressa, okay. and then I came up with all these specific ideas, negative ratios with the anti-lock function, uh, with the gain reduction limiter, uh, with the filters in there that you can really shape the sound to specific sonic characters so that the device at all is more clean, but with the filter you can direct them to a, to to more warmer or brighter tones. So, and that was the idea of the Empress and I think it's very unique and in the way how it's designed and what can do and this is really the unit for electronic music so if people ask me hey what can I do with the Empress then I ask hey what kind of music are you doing so let's say classical music hmm, I think it's not the right <laughs> device for you but everything about hip hop electronic music drum and bass and also rock where you really want to push something and even want to get further and use it as a creative toolbox then the Empress is the right thing no, I totally agree, man. Like I said, man, for me, I've had tons of drum. Uh, yeah, I've had tons of drum uh, comp- like bus compressors or uh, drum stuff that I put on my uh, drum bus before the impressor. Like, I mean, I've had a ton, man. But when I got the impressor, all those got sold and stuff, man. I just kept my impressor. My impressor stays. I mean, it's literally, I set it. I set it one good time, and it's like, forget it. And so I just push my drums into it, coming out my summing mixer, push into it, and it just, like, my drums just blow up, man. I mean, it just hits hard, man. So that's what made me be like, that was uh, one of my first pieces I got from you was the impressor and stuff. And I was just like, oh, wow. I had a friend of mine who uh, was telling me about the impressor probably about 2010 or 11. At the time, I don't think I was ready for it. But when I got it recently, within the last year, it's been on tons of top records that I've done, where it's like, it's definitely been a game changer, man. Now, I want to ask you about the Alpha, man. Now, when it comes to the Alpha, was that your first... Like, did you start off with a transient designer first, or did you go straight to the Alpha and then cut... Not cut down, but did you go straight to the Alpha and say, okay, this is my main idea, and I'm just going to make things from there? Like, you feel Uh, what I'm saying? My my background is that I worked previously at the German company SBL Electronics uh, for 10 years as an electronic engineer. And I developed a whole of stuff there, preamps and also compressors, uh, mix mixing devices, and uh, yeah, and I, I, one of the famous device was the transit designer. So this was originally really my idea uh, okay. to, to to have this um, simple uh, yeah circuitry for designing transients. Uh, and in 2005, I left SPL and then I started my own company with a partner in 2006. And then the Alpha was the first one to, to have okay, a statement. Hey, hey, people, here is Elysia and that's our statement. 
Yeah, because the Alpha, I definitely want to get my hands on the Alpha. I'm going to be honest with you. We got to talk about that because I definitely want to get my hands on the Alpha, man. I have, like, all your stuff except for the Alpha. That's what I do need, you know what I'm saying, to fulfill my collection and everything. But, no, I've noticed that, man. Like, even with the envelope, the envelope, man, you could take a kick that's so puny and tiny and just crank it, and that thing is going to hit through the speakers yeah. like crazy, man. And and that's why I was wondering, like, okay, did you start, like, you just answered that. You start off with the Alpha, and then you say, okay, this is the Alpha, and this is our main uh, centerpiece, and we're going to basically create from this and stuff. And I, I've noticed that, man. I love, like, everything. Your saturator, everything, man. Now, back to the Impressor, man. Do you have, like, secret settings that you personally use that you would love to give people where you're like, yo, you should push it this way? Like, if you push it hard enough this way, it does this and that? Because I have my own way and stuff, yo, but I would definitely want to know, since you created the thing, like, do you have, like, a secret, like, man, if you push it this much DBs in, it'll do this? So, uh, it's a funny question because on when we have trade shows and people come in, I have only one very boring drum loop going on. And, <laughs> and then I make the people, let's say, 10 different sounds with the Empressor from very groovy, from smashing, from pumping, from negative ratios, or you only hear the hi hat. So, it could be everything. So, therefore, I don't have any personal settings because you can do everything. I mean, if you use it for mastering, most of the case, you only do a few dB. Be, but when it comes to very creative things, then the Empress's ring can do very specific things and, and is uh, outstanding. See, that's what I like about the Impress, like you just said. So you can use it. See, I use it on drum bus, but I can also take it off a drum bus and use it for vocals, which I've done before. Yeah. I've tracked vocals with it. You can use it for mastering, which we're going to get into with the music EQ. You feel what I'm saying? So that's what I like. When you when you get one of your pieces of gear, it's not just say, okay, I can only use it for this. That's what I like to use it for, because that's just me. But if you only have that one piece, you can use it for everything. You feel what I'm saying? You can use it for the mastering, the mixing, mix bus, vocals, drums, guitar, whatever you want to use it for it's enough functionality in there that you could use it even with the tilt eq the tilt eq boosts that low end up so much that it's like very big man like even with my tilt my tilt eq is at um like two and a half like you feel what i'm saying so it's like two and a half to the left which boosts up the low end and cuts yeah. the high end and my drums I and i got this. the uh Oh man, my drums just like sound. They got balls to them. You know what I'm saying? It's not it's not puny balls. It's got balls and everything. <laughs> and then it's like even with the um, what else is on there? Like even with the negative ratios, it gives the rhythm, like the whole rhythm to the thing. Like I love the Impressor, dude. Like completely, it's been one of my favorite like drum bus or whatever, whatever bus you want to put it on. It's been like the go-to for almost everything. I just got the Music EQ too to complement that man and stuff. And that's a really powerful mastering and mixing EQ, man. What came up with that when you created that? Like, would you have it in mind? It was uh, so. First, we came up with the Alpha, and then a year later, we came with the Empressor, and then to, to let's say complete the line, we came up with the music, with the same philosophy, with this transparent sound, and and uh, yeah. And so I think for me, uh, the combination of Alpha and music, or Empressor and, and music, is killer. So when I do mastering here, m mostly I use more Alpha, but with Alpha and music, I can I do masterings way better than uh, people with way more gear or plugins. So um, the sonic character is really great, and I'm creating a huge sound stage. And uh, the, the music is a similar idea and, and sound philosophy behind. Yeah, because I love the, the thing I like about the music EQ. You have five bands plus the warm button, so you can you can really dig in. You feel yeah. what I'm saying? Like if you if, plus if you're doing mastering, and you might get a master that has an annoying little sound. You're like, okay. Instead of me plugging up the uh, the plugin, I just want to dig in here and take that sound out. With that with that music EQ, you could totally do that, and you can smooth up the transients with the warm. How it extends the low end and the top end, like yeah, man, that thing is really really good. Because you're the first one I've seen that has an actual warm button, and it's not a gimmick. Like yeah. you feel what I'm saying, like it's a real live. It does what it says it's gonna do. It's gonna warm yeah. it up. So basically, I wanted uh, also the philosophy behind nearly all the tools are that you have a very wide range what you can do with this from, let's say, uh, with the Empressor, for example, only a little bit of compression, even if it's only mm -hmm. 2 dB, yeah, or you can do far to the extreme. And this, mm -hmm. let's say, with the character, you can do only very subtle thing going on on a master bus, or you crank it up like a distortion box. Um, and then it's my philosophy to, to have the, the extreme both uh, ends, so we have a f very broad range what you can do with that. Uh, at, but it's controllable. So, uh, for for example, um, you know the culture vulture was a little bit of a of a thing that we look at when we design the the character. But the problem there was that the um, 
the gaining was very extreme. If you have the input drive and output, really you have to dig in and all the time you have mm -hmm. to change the levels and we make it more intelligent and you have one drive control, which is basically an input drive, but it compensates the output. Normally, if you have an input drive, it gets louder and then it gets yeah. distorted. And with, with the VCA-based concept, we can compensate and then you can focus on only the drive of the sound and don't have to look too much at the level. And so also the ranges of a parameter are important if they're playing good or not. And with the Ampressor, for me, it's like, like driving a sports car. If you do a turnaround, yeah. you feel it directly. And other compressors, you do something, hmm, am I right or not? Is something changing? You're not, yeah. you're not so sure. And, and with the Ampressor, it tells you directly, I'm here and this is the sound you get. And I think then you are very fast to, to have the setting you want. Yeah, I agree. The Impress is not boring at all. It's far from that, man. Like, if you change the setting on there, you're going to hear it. Yeah. But, like, I like the I like the gain limiter on there. Like, the, even the limiter, like, it just, like, like if you do, like, uh, say you do 5 dBs of compression, when you put the limiter on to only limit 2, it just it hits hard, yeah. man. Like, it knocks hard. It knocks really hard, man. Yeah. What the, made the, you do that? Uh, yeah, the idea was uh, normally you have to find a setting with threshold and ratio for the maximum gain reduction. And my example was always you have a drum loop going on and then the drummer is doing the tom break, boom, boom, boom. And then the compressor uh -huh. normally puts down Sh again more gain yeah. reduction. Yeah. And with the limiter, you say, okay, only, let's say, do 6 dB and that's it. And and uh, with this, um, you don't, uh, dist you have more dynamic back again. And that was the idea behind this uh, concept. That's really good. That's what I'm saying. Yo. Even like say even if you do dance music or even with hip hop and you want to do the pumping effect and stuff, usually you have to do a side chain and do this and then do the pumping effect. With this, you can just do the pumping effect with the negative ratios and stuff. Yeah. If you have the right release and the right attack, yo, the pumping effect just automatically starts coming like automatically. Like you find it's a good rhythm to it, man. Like that's why I said like the impressive, like for me, I focus a lot on drums, man. Like a ton. Like yes. I might spend weeks on drums. Also this uh, anti-lock function is exactly made for pumping effects. Normally uh, on the alpha is the opposite. There is to make the release as inaudible as possible. But with the Ampressor, when you put anti-lock, it's really this pumping effect. So it's gain, doing the gain reduction, holding a little bit and snap it back very fast. And when you do the control of the timing, uh, then you get this groovy effect. And then in combination with the gain reduction, you have, have the full control about the amount of gain reduction you, you are using. Yeah, no, definitely, man. Dude, like I said, man, the, the the stuff that I could do with this is it'll take me about five plugins to do with something else. You feel what I'm saying? With this is definitely like, like yeah, it's been my like I said, it's been my main compressor. It's like I don't know how much more to say to that. It's been my main, and I've had a shit ton of other compressors before, but that has stayed and stayed wow. on my mix bus. And like I said, I got the music EQ now, which I keep on my entire mix, man. And I keep it almost in a, a set and forget thing because. Every time I mix, I'm cutting or boosting the same thing. So I keep it more in a set and forget, and it sounds great. Even with the 3D, even if you just put it on there and put no um, no cuts or boosts and just leave it, it gets real 3D. Like, everything gets bigger. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, it gets way bigger, man. Dude, now, with the alpha, now, this is, why, uh, this, this is my personal thing. Now I'm going to my own personal thing. Okay, the alpha compressor, man, like, bro, what is like, what is up with that? Because that thing is like beastly, man. Like, it seems like you buy that one thing and you're set for life. Yeah. So also the alpha is something in, in mastering, but you can do for everything. So it's not for a specific genre or, or type of music. It's made for everything. You can use it for classic, for rock, for R&B, for trap, for electronic music. And the basic sound philosophy is the same, to make it larger, bigger, nicer, and, and you enjoy more the music, so it will enhance nearly all kinds of music. And, and that's uh, the, the basic idea for the alpha. And uh, so I've done so many mastering myself, and I mean, many people do masterings with this. And the whole concept is, in my opinion, way more than only a compressor. So if you compare the mm -hmm. alpha to a standard bus compressor, it can do way more for you. It's more like a toolbox with yes. also the audio filters, with MS metrics, with um, parallel, and also even with the uh, soft clipper I'm using my alpha as my last part of my mastering chain mm. before my converter is coming and then I do a fine adjustment of my soft clipper settings to my converter and then I can use my gain knob to, to drive it more or less into the soft clipper and so it prevents me a little bit from my peaks in most of the cases 
um, I don't do any plugin after this. So and and the the comparison is really amazing when I use the Alpha and Music and Impressor uh, compa compared to the original version. And when you do a loudness comparison between this, is, is amazing what what the Alpha can do for you. Yeah, that's really cool. So what you're what you're saying basically is that yo, you could even if you do it for mastering, you can use the Alpha as your compressor and your limiter to push and your so you got basically got three pieces of gear you have to buy yep. that you can get into this one piece that if you push your mix into it is soft clips and you don't even have to use a limiter no plug in no nuts so you get the organic sound of your mix and master through this piece that's what i'm talking about see that's what i like about your company man it's a one-stop shop like i can just come to your place get all the pieces i need and then i'm set like you feel what i'm saying it's a complete one-stop shop for a mix engineer a mastering engineer and a producer you feel what i'm saying because nowadays the producer is the mixing engineer and the masking engineer like how it was in dance music back in the days. You feel what I'm saying? Hip-hop is the only one in the 90s and 2000s that they say, okay, I have to go get a mix engineer, I have to go get a mastering engineer. Unlike dance music or stuff like that where the DJ was the producer, the mix engineer, and the mastering engineer. We're coming like back in a circle again now. Yeah. yeah which it's is made really cool. This. So I think also the line with the with the cubes now, with the 500 series, with the 19 inch and the high end stuff, it's something what is affordable for everybody. And uh, I think um, with the flexibility of the of the concept, you can use it for everything. And I think that is uh, the, the cool idea behind the the, the concept of, of our gear. Um, we can use it for mixing, and I know many people using an expressor and X filter for their mastering chain, and it works mm -hmm. pretty much pretty good. Well, that's what I had. That, I had the expression as well. And so I had the expressor and um, I have the character. The character I love on, once again, on drums and stuff. Like if you want to make like that lo-fi cassette tape type sound, you can do that with the character. You feel what I'm saying? If you want to beef up a little bit. Like that's why I say, yeah, I personally, this is my personal thing and I quote myself on this. I really feel your gear is one of the first ones made for hip hop, EDM and whatever. Like I really do, man, because a lot of people, when they make gear, the first thing they're thinking is, um, you know what I'm saying? Like, Okay, we're just gonna do a band, boom, boom, boom. But your gear, even though you had that thought, it translated over even better to the electronic world, which made me a fan of it. You feel what I'm saying? That's yeah, it's true because uh, on, on one hand, my, my let's say sound philosophy in in terms of, tra of of transparency comes more from rock. But basically, I'm more into electronic music. And in the end of the '90s. I, I've done a lot of, um, created some very specific units myself. So during the time at SPL, sometimes there was some, let's say, an enclosure was not used or the PCB board. So I bring in some completely different uh, stuff in there. So most of the cases, some filters, auto filters, LFO, stuff like this. Mm -hmm. And I have a bunch of equipment like this, which are more effect boxes. So, and, and during that time, um, I also made some electronic music, was driven by music. and other way to create all these sounds and scapes uh, in electronic music. So I was a big fan of this and therefore uh, all my devices are tested with synthesizers, with, with bass and everything to check out if it's possible for electronic music and especially I think in electronic music you need this transparent sound, this more mm -hmm. pushing to forward and compared to vintage equipment was made in the back in the days for their purpose and needed and was great. But nowadays there's other music genres and you need other another sound stage. I agree, including with the loudness war, like even with the alpha, like the fact you can beat in the you can be top competitive in the loudness war, but not have it to where it's hurting your ears. Like you have a soft clipper, where a lot of these guys don't have that. They'll just take a limiter and just shoot it down, and it just is killing you. You feel what I'm saying? Like your gear is like, yo, we can get the thing loud, we can get the thing sounding good, but it's gonna still gonna be a smooth analog sound. It's not gonna be like a pokey sound. Everything's gonna be nice and smooth. You feel what I'm saying? So that's why I'm saying like, and even with your gear, like if you have the cube, you have the rack mount, like anything you want is gonna be the highest quality and it's all gonna be its own thing. You feel what I'm saying? Where a lot of other companies will come out with a piece of gear, then it'll just cut down. Where you don't do that. You're like, okay, you could buy all of it and it's all gonna work to the highest quality. This is what you want. Yeah, I mean, that is comes from the technology that we're using. And I think that's the biggest difference, um, maybe compared to other companies, um, because we're using discrete technologies. That means mm -hmm. um, we make it really from the single piece, from a single transistor. And normally, if you want to create an analog device, you can use tubes for this, or maybe integrated circuits. And then you can use different op amps, which is an integrated circuit. And we're creating, let's say, our op amps ourselves. So I've, I've influenced the whole circuitry to 
the sound and, and the transient response and how it will react and everything. And if you open up our devices, you will see a bunch of transistors. Mm -hmm. And I'm I'm really good in com to combine this and and also to do to get to go further. So one. Uh, thing that all or like a compressor is needed is a VCA. It's a con voltage controlled amplifier. So you put a DC voltage in, and then uh, the level will drop uh, or change. Um, and there are only a few companies making integrated circuits for a VCA. But when I check them out, uh, this was not the sound that I wanted. Not the transparency, not the the punch in there. So we created our own VCAs with discrete uh, transistors. And that's the reason why our gear or the key, why let's say an Empress on Alpha and other sounds different because we do a core component ourselves um, and I think that is one of the key part why we're different to others they only can use um, the, the VCA that are on the market and have a specific sound and we do our own and in all the range and the, the, the different devices we have I have always created a different VCA not only one type so the alpha is different than the impressor than the expressor then the character always improve it or do it a little bit different even the op amps that I'm creating is always a little bit different and improving them and it's like playing with Lego for me so you get all the small pieces and making you bigger one and let the other companies are more like Playmobil where you have to fix everything's fixed and yeah. put it together and I think that is our as a secret why we can do everything ourselves but also um passive component like resistors like uh, capacitors the power supply everything has an influence to the sound and if you have a certain sound in your mind then you mm -hmm. know if you change something it's going in this or this direction then you can decide what you want and that's the reason why uh, our gear is in have a yeah like like a signature sound and mm -hmm. uh, because i wanted to have it in this th in this uh, direction no, I love your signature sound, man. Like I said, man, I'm a, I become a fan. You feel what I'm trying to say? Like completely, I've totally become a fan. The only one I don't have is the Alpha, which I, I need an Alpha. Wink, wink. You know what I'm saying? I need. So I'm gonna give you my address. I need an Alpha sent to my house. That's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so up for real. I definitely need an Alpha, man. That's the only one I don't have out the collection. But no, dude. And even with your promo video, I saw you had like one. The, one of the dudes had an MPC60, and that's when I knew I was just like, oh man, this dude's got an MPC60 in the promo video. Like I've never seen that before. That's so cool, man. I've actually owned a couple of. <laughs> and stuff, yo. So I thought that was really cool. Now the fun with the electronic music is for me you can do way more than in traditional recording so if you're recording mm -hmm. a band and you have good microphones good musicians you only change there a little bit a bit of EQing a bit of compression but in electronic music you can do way more you have some oh, totally. samples and then you can crank it up to extreme EQ, EQ settings or compression settings or distortion so the freedom of manipulating is way more than traditional recording and that is uh, when I talk about my equipment that's why it has both ends one only a little bit in a high quality but it can go to very extreme to be mm -hmm. very creative and my personal fun is always to combine stuff like an expressor or an impressor uh, with a character with an X-Fill and combine it and let's let's say we put a loop in there manipulate them then it's complete different and I think with an attitude with some some power in there that's what I really love to play and create my own loops and sounds with this kind of, of uh, manipulating no I agree man that's what I'm saying like what your gear see this is the thing about it man a lot of producers including the young ones nowadays think you have to have 30 plugins to manipulate a sound to where they'll get one of your pieces of gear like an impress and you can manipulate the shit out of it and then even if you get like the character after that you can make it to the lo-fi sound if you want it that whole lo-fi cassette tape sound with the impressor you feel what I'm saying then you can get a music EQ and then and cut and, and carve with the way you want but we talking about three pieces of gear where you would need like 50 plugins to do that you feel what I'm saying well, you get those yep. in three high quality pieces and then after you finish that you can still take those pieces mix your record master your record put your record out in yep, three pieces exactly. you feel what i'm saying in three yep, pieces exactly. where it takes people like i have to get a whole bundle like nah you just get those three pieces out of the set and then you ready to roll yeah exactly i mean this is the biggest difference in between digital and analog domain because compression eqing and distortion these are the really the things that analog are uh, really good in and way way better than the digital because of the resolution so if you only sample something then the resolution is, is okay with the let's say 48 kilohertz but when you start to make uh, changes in frequency response and compressors then the analog domain is by far better for example the music where the warm button is in that's basically um that the one part of the amplifier will slow down i make it 
make it slower but but when you do the measurement it's only let's say about 100 kilohertz where you can measure this effect but you can hear this so there are many things going on and an analog circuitry what you can hear which is uh, way up to 20 kilohertz but will have an influence or an equalizer if you put let's say by f five kilohertz you boost something and you look at your sample editor there are not that many samples to rep represent the waveform and if you do some editing there uh, with an EQ, the, the analog is way more precise than, than mm -hmm. a digital version. And, and also the amplifiers in the signal pass have an influence to the sound. That's the reason why, let's say, one EQ sounds different to another, of the, because of the amplifiers, one is faster or slower, or more THD, whatever that is. And with the, in the digital main, you won't get that far. So for me, it is like um, when you have analog, analog could be very vintage, lo-fi, mm -hmm. a lot of distortion could be more very high end, let's say like your alpha, this mm -hmm. range, and the digital is more like this. Even if yeah. you have a lot of plugins, you won't yeah, go, not go off, out of this range. But if you go to analog, you can go like this. Completely, even with the headroom on analog, man, you could push it harder. There's a lot of things you can do that you can't do with plugins. Plugins to me is more of um, fast food things, like more of a McDonald's, where we're talking more like like some good uh, good restaurant food. You feel what I'm saying? Some five star stuff going on here, and everything. you get more for your money. You know what I'm saying? Like when you when you buy one of your pieces, you get way more for your money than you would with the plugin situation. You feel what I'm saying? Like you said, you can go from super clean if you want to completely dirty all in one piece to where a lot of times you have to buy like three or four pieces just to do that you feel what i'm saying of something else and then still got to buy something else to get the mastering and mixing done so that's why i say i love about your stuff man like hands down is the manipulation everything like i said it's been a total game changer in my setup yo and i, and I gotta like completely tell you once again i need an alpha <laughs> i need a, i gotta try alpha. bro i see people with alpha man i feel like i should have an alpha in my setup man like completely and everything i've been hearing about this thing for about two three years now and i'm like man i gotta try this thing this alpha man i see mastering studios with it. that's the only thing i don't have is the alpha but i think it's more important to have let's say not only alpha in the studio but uh to have the, the other stuff in the studio like like filter like an expressor what you use in the production because when you run your samples through this uh device and print it again and you make this with more track then the whole mix will grow grow and yeah it's, i agree it's, will, it's better uh, rather than have a let's say worse mix going to the alpha so it's better to mm -hmm. to manipulate all the symbols uh, the tracks itself the kicks and snare to have the transients in there and I think that's a good way also for young producers having only a few pieces but in good yeah. quality they can use it on each tracks and then put it on their master track and then I really have a big step well, me personally, the reason why I keep on saying the alpha, I just want I want mine for bragging rights. You feel <laughs> what I'm saying? I want mine for brag. I just want to call somebody up right now who I know and say I got an alpha sitting in my studio. <laughs> like you feel what I'm saying? That's why I keep on giving the the, the signals of the alpha. But no, you're 100 percent right, yo. If you're a new producer and you're on a program, man, if you get something like the Cube or get something like the Expressor and stuff like that, man, you're ready to roll. Like you're more yeah. than ready. Like I said, your company does not cut. It is, it's not a cut down company. It's a we make things for each thing. You feel what I'm saying? So we have this one if you want to go here. We have this one if you go here. Either Whatever way you want to go, we have it for you. Even if you're a traveling DJ, if you're a traveling DJ, you can get the cube, hook it up to your mixer, and do all your effects while you're cutting. You yeah. feel what I'm saying? You can use that for that as well. So, no, that's why that's why I personally feel when I tell people about y'all, I feel in my heart that it's made for people like myself who do electronic music. Like, you feel what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's the first company that I've seen in a while that's really made. There's only, like, two other companies I know that have stuff like that but yours is made for like me like the producer like you said hey bless we made this for you like you feel yeah. what i'm saying i mean the the truth is that actually uh, most of the music is electronic produced and it could be pop but it's also r&b hip-hop it's all electronic based and therefore um we we'll, the most of i think the music industry is looking way to the back and and say okay the beatles recorded this album with that pre amp so you have to need this but hey we are doing completely different music and i think uh, when you go to analog and use this kind of equipment you can make a difference to, to another production i think that is important to know for young producers because 
everybody have it's it's door it's samples and everything and the sound is similar and i think when you start to go to analog and do the processing you make the difference and i heard it also from many other producers using the equipment this way they're making amazing sound and i think the next thing we have to know is uh the studios are home studios actually people are having small rooms and producing mm -hmm. their stuff there and so not only 19 inch equipment is yeah you don't have the space sometimes for this so i see so many tables with an iMac on and and uh, speakers and that's it and therefore not 19 inch rec space so that was the yeah. idea of the cube i go into one producer and and he have an envelope left over because his um, api rack was full and so hey could you create something some kind of a housing that was the idea for uh, for the cube and I, I love the cube even here yeah. I have a small one stand next to me on a stand for with a microphone preamp in there and I love it so and I'm actually I'm at home I'm also um, setting up a little home studio setup and the cube is essential for this and, and also for traveling or even in a recording room where you put your preamp next to the microphone uh, I love that concept yeah, I want to try the preamp. I haven't tried that one yet and stuff, yo, when it comes to that. I definitely want to try that. And so I've seen that and stuff with the Cube and everything. And I agree. And another thing about the Cube is, too, is that say if uh, you're a producer and you was, and that you only have a budget for three or four pieces at the moment and you don't want to feel like buying a 500 series rack, you can just go straight to the Cube yep. and say, okay, I'm going to get the Cube and I'm fine. Like, you feel yep. what I'm saying? And then I want to go from there there on. Where a lot of times, and I've seen this in the past, where a person will have enough money to get three pieces of gear, but then they still have to get the 500 series rack. Yeah. But with you, you're saying, okay, yo, this dead the 500 series rack if you don't have it. We have the cube for you, and you can just grab that. See, I like that. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, you make stuff that's for today. Like, you found it's not for, yeah. like, the 70s. It's not for the 60s. It's for today. Yeah, exactly. I think that is also why I'm also in discussion with young producers. And my clients, I think, are more the young generation. So yes, back I in agree. The past, back in the past, we wanted to address the, 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 the engineers that are famous and having the, the big bands uh, that are already known. But mm -hmm. the truth is that we are addressing way more the younger producers, making more electronic music and the sound. But these people are producing is really amazing. So therefore, this is for me high end for you studio at home and also with the cube um the, the i think the problem with space is really huge and with the cube you can put it on top of it and make it like mm -hmm. a like a yeah and, and i think that is important and also with you have jack connectors in there so if you have a keyboard a synthesizer mpc you put it directly with the with your jack connections because most of apis are only uh, xr connections and then you have adapters and stuff like this and uh, i really love it to have a synthesizer do some processing with the cubes or other stuff and enhance us print it and then yo you you happy so you have something as a waveform which sounds great and not okay it's nice but now i have to check the next plugin the next plugin and, <laughs> yeah and, exactly and you're missing the excitement i think that is because in in the 90s where they produced mostly analog on analog desk and have tons of samplers and synthesizers and all these samplers even when they were digital internally uh, there is some analog circuitry. The, the DA converters were different. The analog output state was different. So each device sounds a little different and has, has its benefits. And then you combine on an analog mixing desk. And all these effects are lost, actually. So if you play back a sample in Ableton, it sounds the same like in Logic. So there's mm -hmm. no interaction in there. And even if you put plugins in there, in the analog domain, each device had an input state, output state, a transformer, some kind of power yeah. supply. All this will color the sound a little bit. And then you go to the mixing desk and everything will shape the sound, sometimes in a good way, but also sometimes in a bad way. So I wouldn't ex um, recommend to use the cheapest mixer for a hip hop no. producer because we'll lose the sound. So here, the, the standard for digital is very high. So to be better, you need really high end analog equipment to, to have a benefit of this. And I think uh, with our idea and, and uh, yeah, what we're creating, you have the benefit. I agree. And another thing I want to add on top of that is not even just that. You mix faster and create faster with the hardware than you would with a plug-in. Like, you feel what I'm saying? Like, you feel it more. It's more of an organic feel and everything. You get the point. You can get from point A to B way faster, man. Like, 10 times faster. You feel like, for example, even with my drum bus, like, I just send it out to the uh, end process. already set the way I want to. I do my cuts and stuff with a fab filter EQ and stuff and then call it a day. And then on my main mix bus is my, um, my music EQ. So I do all my cuts there. 
there, do a couple of things, and the mix is finished. It's not like, okay, I gotta get this, 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 and this, and I still gotta add this. It's like, come on, man. That's like, it's that's that's fast food mixing, man. You feel what I'm saying? Like, you would totally get a more of an organic feel to where your client, customer, even the stuff you just wanna create for yourself, you'll feel good about. You feel what I'm saying? And as far as home studios go, that is the new thing now. Major studios are not the thing no more, like at all. Like, you feel what I'm saying? Like, now it's more of the guys who have the home studios, like myself, who have that type of gear in there and who feel good about it. Like, and you talk about space, dude, I have no space. So a person like me with a cube is beyond perfect to put on my desk and, and rock it from there. And also the thing is, I've, in music, I mean, when, when people listen to music, they do it mostly with their heart. So mm -hmm. they listen to something and, oh, that's nice or not. And I think the analog stuff can really push it more to emotion that you feel it better, love it more, yeah, better, yep. start to dance faster. Uh, and, and I think... Sometimes I thought we are too much into the digital area. So you're looking to a huge screen with the arrangement. We don't listen that much anymore. We're only looking yeah. and we see the arrangement. We know what's coming next. And back in the days in the analog, you have a mixing desk and, and it's more intuitive. So, okay, the height needs to be louder and softer. You do some EQ adjustment. I think with hardware, you can do a similar. So when you have an analog, let's say, compressor, you focus more on hearing because you can mm -hmm. close your eyes and, and listen on Only and feel more and I think that is what's lost because when you you have a door you always have to control your mouse so you really yeah. have to do, do need that feedback where is your mouse where have a click you could not um, switch your eyes off so that therefore I think that is uh, the difference in, in analog domain I totally agree analog domain is more feel where the computer domain is more like uh, technical more robotic yeah. and everything I, mean, no, I totally agree I mean, that absolutely, it's, it's uh, pros. I mean, you can see the full arrangement. You see everything where it's coming. So the overview of the whole is, is amazing. You can navigate very fast when it comes but to sound processing and, and emotions and impact. That's different. I mean, all electronic music are based on rhythms. And I totally you, agree. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you pick some samples together and then it makes yeah or not it's the same mm -hmm. you go on the live concert here one drummer is hitting hard and making the yeah the groove and the next is not good and mm -hmm. in in electronic music you really need some tools uh, to change this to the way it starts to groove i think yes. therefore you need real good equipment I totally agree, and that's where you come in at. So no, I totally agree, a hundred percent, man. Well, bro, I just want to be—I just want to be honest, man. I appreciate this interview, man. Like hands down, man. I appreciate to be able to speak to the person that makes the gear that I use every day for what I do, whether that be production, filmmaking, whatever it is. When I'm doing my score music, I can use this to get it popping. Like you found, I'm saying, like I really appreciate that, man. And once again, I need an alpha. <laughs> I need an alpha. <laughs> I yeah. definitely need an alpha. Thanks stuff, very man, much, also. So <laughs> thank, thank you very man. much for talking to you. It was very interesting to, to hear it from the perspective of producer and and uh, yeah, as a user to get a feedback like this. So all thanks very much for you. Oh, dude, I love it, man. Trust and believe, man. I have all your stuff. So I got to get the preamp. I'm going to try that on this new records I got coming out. I'm going to send you some stuff, too, yeah. so you can hear what's going on, man, for real, man. So I definitely appreciate it, my brother. It was yeah. good talking to you, man. Thanks. All right? Peace, bro. Yeah, bye.